Should your organization be concerned about high winds, earthquakes, floods, and power outages? The answer is, of course, yes. Most of the United States is at some risk from natural disaster, and it is important that your businesses, organizations, associations, and community groups understand the impact a disaster can have on your business and community. The Ready Business Program, earthquakes, hurricanes, inland flooding, power outages, and severe wind and tornadoes, preparing a resilient business. Hosted by John Zarella. Leading experts estimate 75% of businesses without continuity planning will fail within three years following a disaster. That is why FEMA teamed up with Flash to create Ready Business Toolkits as part of the Ready Business program to help businesses ensure they are able to continue operating after a disaster. Following the step-by-step -step instructions in the Ready Business Toolkit as a part of your overall business continuity planning will help protect assets, sustain the ability to provide goods and services to customers, maintain cash flow, preserve competitive advantage and reputation, and provide the ability to meet legal, regulatory, financial, and contractual obligations. Once you have completed the steps in the Ready Business Toolkit, you will have what you need to identify your risk, develop a plan, take action, and have the opportunity to apply for recognition as a member of the Ready Business community. So how do I become a Ready Business and join the Ready Business community? Here's how. Step one. Identify your risk. Now the first step is to identify your risk by completing a back-to-business self-assessment. The assessment allows you to determine the specific areas your organization needs to address to prepare, mitigate risk, and return to operation following a disaster. You will begin the assessment based on a natural disaster that could happen to your business. For example, a tornado strikes your community and damages both the structure and the contents in the building where your organization operates. Due to damage, your building has been yellow tagged by the building department and is closed. A more thorough assessment of your building damage is needed to determine if your structure is safe or can be made safe prior to reopening. Depending on your type of organization, expect that either 50% of your inventory is unsellable or that 50% of your computers or other equipment was damaged during the event. Choose whichever creates the greater impact on your organization. Assume that all utilities are interrupted. The assessment will show that the damage is repairable to the structure. So now you will need to address staff, contents, cleanup, repairs, and replacement. Based on this scenario, you will complete the back-to-business self-assessment questions to identify your risk. Once you identify your risk, you will need to develop your plan. Based on the information you provided in the assessment, you will need to complete the Ready Business Preparedness and Mitigation Project Plan to identify actions needed to ensure safety and business continuity. You're going to need a plan for the following categories, staff, surroundings, space, systems, structure, and service. Step two, develop a plan. Staff includes planning and preparedness activities for the protection of your employees. Michael Tenney, Director of Business Continuation for USAA. The way we raise awareness is really building res a resilient workforce. And so you can have resilient business, business processes, resilient systems, but in order to ensure the recovery of your business or your operations, it really starts with resilient people and training those employees how to respond to a disruption event, not only from a business perspective, but also a personal perspective. Uh, it's having that plan in place to be able to respond to that type of event. Those resilient people are going to build a resilient operation. Surroundings includes items that potentially pose a threat during an event, such as fences, flagpoles, trees, and even other buildings. Brian Wirt, Southeastern U.S. Engineering Manager for Simpson Strong Tie. If my neighbor's building falls over and becomes windborne debris, that's going to impact my building. 
so you really do have to look at those surroundings. If you had taller structures around you in, in, in earthquake areas that could possibly fall on your structure, you'd want to look at that just the same way as a homeowner would look at a large oak tree with large you know, branches hanging over their home. Space includes protecting the contents of your workspace, such as furniture, computers, or equipment and inventory. Different risks will require different actions for this category. I spoke with Mark Snyder, owner of Red Hook Winery in Brooklyn, New York. You were saying the barrels came through the walls? Yeah, through? we have a bower room that is separated over here by walls and windows. Mm -hmm. And when the water rushed in from all four sides, the barrels actually floated, which we did not anticipate, and they came through the windows and walls, and they would crash into one another and break, and salt water went into the barrels, the wine emptied, the grapes that we were fermenting emptied. So there were a lot of lessons that we learned in terms of how to prevent this type of thing from happening in the future. Systems includes utility systems that support the operation of the building and the non-structural architectural elements. For example, air conditioning units, fuel tanks, fire sprinkler systems, roof parapets, suspended ceilings, light fixtures, and water heaters all fall into this category. Terry Kavner owner and president of Moore Overhead Door. The main thing that I have learned as a business owner is I can pretty much operate my businesses if I have power. And I learned that in the 90, 1999 tornado. So I make sure that both of my businesses as well as my home has a backup, whole house, whole business backup generator. Structure includes architectural and structural elements of the building especially construction types that may be vulnerable to damage or failure during an event. Brian Wirt, Southeastern U.S. Engineering Manager for Simpson Strong Tie. The best thing that you need to do is make sure that your roof is actually tied to your walls. Code has recently changed. It used to only worry about concrete or masonry walls and having a tie for, for your roof so your wall wouldn't peel away. But now it's for any type of wall system. The, the code has changed to where even if it's wood, you have to look into that. So even if you're looking at a small commercial building, you want to make sure that your roof is, is tied to your wall. And now we worry about here in McKinney in the southeast, we worry about uplift and making sure everything is tied together. But in earthquake country, you got to make sure that you, you're tied together for lateral. Because if you have a big tilt-up wall like we do for this entire facility, and one of those panels goes, it's the next one, the next one, you get the domino effect. Service includes the opportunities for your organization to engage and serve the community following an event. Remember to prepare your own organization before serving others. James R. McGowan, Director of Development and Philanthropy for the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank. We encourage people to be, pre be prepared so they can better prepare their neighbors and help their neighbors in times of disaster. So we encourage all of our employees, we encourage all of our agencies, we encourage all the people that we work with on a daily basis, not only to prepare yourself or your organization, but prepare your personal self and your personal home to be resilient to disasters. You can identify the actions needed for each category by reviewing the quick reference guide in the toolkit. Step three, take action. Now that you've created your project plan, it's time for the final step. Take action. Perform the preparedness and mitigation activities you identified in your project plan, then document your actions as instructed. Staff, surroundings, space, systems, structure, and service with signatures, photographs, receipts, or letters from a company or organization, manager, engineer, or design professional. Next, seek approval by the building owner if you are leasing or renting and be sure to check with your local building department to secure required permits prior to performing any retrofitting or other mitigation activities. Including your local emergency manager in these preparations provides another level of confidence your company is on the right path to preparedness. Finally, complete the application at the end of the program for recognition as a ready business and enjoy the peace of mind of knowing you have done your part to promote safety, mitigate potential loss, and protect your business or organization. To download a copy of the Ready Business Program Toolkit, or in order to get additional information on 
organizing a workshop in your area, visit flash.org or www.ready.gov/business.